Hello, we're going to look at how to analyze taxes in a supply and demand framework. So we're going to solve for the market equilibrium first without taxes. Quantity demanded equals 50 minus P. P is the per unit price of the product that consumers pay. And then the supply side of the market, capturing the behavior of firms, quantity supplied equals minus 10 plus 0 0.5 P. So you'll notice with the demand equation, a higher price means consumers will not be willing to buy as many units. Whereas with the supply equation, a higher price, because it's a positive 0.5p, sellers would want to bring more to the market at a higher price. It's in their profit maximizing interest. So equilibrium is defined where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. So we're going to set both of these equations equal to one another. We got one equation and one unknown. So adding 10 to both sides, we get 60. And then adding P to both sides, we're going to get P plus 0.5P or 1.5P on the right hand side. Dividing everything through by 1.5, the equilibrium price is $40. We can make sure our answer is correct by plugging this $40 back into the demand and supply equation. So if I plug it into the demand equation, we see consumers want to buy 10 units. We plug it this 40 into the supply equation, we see that sellers are willing to offer 10 units for sale. So by definition, this is equilibrium, where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. So to sum up, the equilibrium price in this market is $40, and the equilibrium quantity is 10. So what we'll do now is we're going to put a tax in this market. So now we're going to look at what happens when we put a tax in this market. We're going to put this tax on sellers. So sellers are responsible for paying the tax to the government. So once again, our same equations that we used in the first problem. But with a tax, the key thing here to remember is that there will be a wedge between what buyers pay. The B here represents what buyers pay when there's a tax in the market and S represents what sellers receive when there's a tax in the market. So firms or sellers are required to pay a $6 per unit tax. So from the seller's perspective, the price that sellers will receive net of taxes is what buyers pay the sellers minus a $6 tax that sellers have to submit to the government. So after taxes or net of taxes, the price that sellers will clear in the market when there is a per unit tax is the price that buyers pay minus the $6. So once again, just rewriting the demand equation. But for the supply equation, I'm going to take this price that buyers pay minus 6, and I'm going to plug it in for P subscript S. I'm going to make a substitution. So making that substitution, you can see what I did over here in parentheses. What is P subscript S? Well, it's the price that buyers pay minus the $6 tax. If it was a $2 tax or $4 tax, we'd just have a different number here, minus 2, minus 4, for example. Simplifying this up, uh, this 0.5 multiplied by minus 6 is minus 3. So minus 10 minus 3 is where this minus 13 is coming from. And just setting quantity demanded equal to quantity, quantity supplied once again. One equation, one unknown. We're going to solve for the price that buyers pay in the face of a tax. So adding 13 to both sides, we get 63. Adding the price that buyers pay to both sides, we get this. And we see that when there's a tax, buyers are now paying more. Without a tax, buyers paid $40. Now they're paying $42. And sellers are receiving $42 from the buyers, but then the sellers have to submit a $6 check to the government, so leaving sellers net with $36 for each unit sold. So we can see that sellers are worse off. They're receiving lower prices in a market that is taxed compared to one that is not taxed. So just rewriting our results from the last screen. We can check what quantity demanded is. P 
plugging in the $42 into the demand equation, consumers will now only want to buy eight units when there's a tax in the market. And as for sellers, plugging in the after-tax price that sellers receive into our supply equation, sellers will only want to bring eight units to the market. So our new equilibrium quantity is eight. So without a tax, just to recap, the price was $40, the equilibrium quantity was 10. With a tax, buyers are paying more, they're paying $2 more. And sellers, they're receiving less. Sellers are paying $4 of the tax in the form of lower prices, the old price minus the new price that sellers receive. So the share of the tax paid by buyers, two divided by six, where six is the total tax, and buyers are paying $2 of this tax in the form of higher prices. So the share of the tax burden on buyers is one third, and the share of the tax burden on sellers is going to be two thirds. Sellers are paying $4 of this $6 tax. All right, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.